Living on reds, vitamin C, and cocaine. Wait a minute. Is this on? Oh, crap. Sorry about that. I was just singing a whole Grateful Dead song. Welcome to the On the Lamb Variety Show, and I'm your host, On the Lamb. Um, I've changed formats a little bit, but I've decided to kind of do a variety show. And so I like to just cover a lot of topics, a lot of different things, uh, ranging from men's issues and hobbies, traveling, hiking, boating, motorcycling, camping, guns, gear, women, dogs, cigars, barbecue, and of course, ice cream. So without further ado, um, look, we're going to go ahead and before I start, we're going to go ahead and start with some housekeeping issues. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but don't pay me. <laughs> I'm having too much fun doing this. I don't need the money. I enjoy this. Uh, you know, I travel about, I'm retired and I travel about 12 days a month go to the coast. I, I live in California, so um, I have my little camping rig that I go with, and uh, you know, just, I don't need the money. So, uh, if you are uh, uh, feel, feeling philanthropic, or is that thropic? Philanthropic, by all means, um, go go to your favorite content providers, PayPal or Patreon, whoever that is, and show them some love. A lot of folks put a lot of time and effort in these uh, videos, and as you can see by mine, I don't. <laughs> I will one day, but right now I don't. Um, and certainly, you know, go ahead and go there if you feel like you want to donate some money to them. Help them out. Everybody needs a, you know, a hand up. Help them uh, update their software or, you know, buy cigars or, you know, or buy a little tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Whatever, you know, whatever they spend on, that's cool. It's all good. But show them that you care. Show them that you respect their work. They're, everybody's an artist of, of sorts, right? And so anyway, um, don't give me any money. I don't need it. Don't want it. That's okay. It's cool. Um, so again, go go to your favorite uh, content providers, PayPal and Patreon, if you feel so inclined to do so, and show them some love. All right, so that's kind of about me, about what I'm doing here. And um, uh, let's see, so I'm going to go ahead and just read something directly. I, I wrote this a few days ago. I meant to post it. I'm just not, just now getting around to it. Um, so without further ado, this thing's out. Here we go. Um, staring down at the Kilaua Kilauea crater in the di in the distance at Volcano Park in Hilo, Hawaii. We have ignition. We have ignition. I'll start over. Sorry about that. Take two. Staring down at the Kilauea crater in the distance at Vol. Volcano Park in Hilo, Hawaii, I stood in awe of the inspiring majesty. The Hawaiians are a very friendly and spiritual people, being the first settlers of the Hawaiian Islands dating back to about 400 CE, the Common Era, when Polynesians from the Marquesas Islands, some 2,000 miles away, traveled to Hawaii's Big Island in, in canoes. Back in 2013, I went to the Big Island of Hawaii to check out my property in Mountain View, in Mountain View on the Big Island, just a scant 15 miles north of the big crater of Kilauea. Like all tourists, I checked out all the venues, the restaurants, the farmers markets, and all the to-do things there that I saw in the local travel guide, and I had a great time, I'll admit that. Boy, it's a beautiful island, and, and uh, the people are really cool and friendly and heartwarming, and the food's delicious there. Yes, I'm a foodie, and I do cook. Uh, one of my best friends of over 30 years uh, is a full-time resident there, and he took off from his uh, his busy day job for the week to be my personal tour guide, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you, Tim. I had a blast. Thanks for showing me around the Big Island. He showed me a lot of places that not the local or not the uh, <clears throat> you know people, the visitors and travelers get to see. He knows all the he knows everybody there, and he knows all the cool little little uh, spots around there that you know not everybody gets to see. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Like all Hawaiians, I knew all about the history and volcanic activity uh, long before I even got there. I'm smoking an Avo, a Synchro cigar. If you're a cigar aficionado like I am, try one. They're smooth and creamy. Anyway, um, I was even made the, an honorary Hawaiian by the flight attendant. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the area known as the East Rift has, has a long history of lava flows dotting its topography since the 1950s. 
So it came as no surprise to me uh, when this recent lava flow occurred. The news media really, uh, really only shows a very small part of the picture. That's me. I was just a Taco Bell. No, I'm kidding. The um, my neighbor's got loud pipes on on her car. I think she's making the beer run for us. So that's cool. It's all good. Um, the news media really only shows a very small part of the picture as they only show the crater itself in a lot of the YouTube and news clips you see and um, and they show the um, you know they show the the crater with the descending lava cauldron inside and uh, the Leilani Estates which is really only a very small but beautiful subdivision three miles from the ocean and is around uh, 27 miles northeast of Kilauea but down the hill from Kilauea on the eastern slope um, but that's all you see so don't get the impression that the whole island's like that because it's not I mean yeah there are four volcanoes there and yeah Kilauea has been active since the early 80s you know blowing lava into the ocean okay that that being said the rest of the island's wonderful and it doesn't have these current issues that that right now that north north I'm sorry southern Hilo is, is experiencing they're doing some roof repair on the on the on the roof so pardon the noise anyway um, again that by no means diminishes the urgency and danger of living on an active volcano uh, as I mentioned earlier the big island actually has four volcanoes and Kilauea is the, the most active so I actually went to a subdivision right next to the Leilani Estates called Hawaiian Gardens uh, which is beautiful I mean beautiful really it's just amazing there um, but it also sits on several old lava flows and uh, the lava flows of course have long since cooled and hardened and of course people go out there and build their houses on them and everything so uh, but I just wanted to throw that in there and so it's no wonder people build their houses there you think why would you build on, on an active volcano in a lava flow but if you actually have been there and you see how beautiful it is you know we're talking about a beautiful all green down slope that goes right to the ocean and these people are building some pretty big homes you know with a panoramic view of the ocean I mean the, you know aside from the fact that it's close to the volcano it's it's you know it's just spectacular so and it's like Malibu and Santa Barbara all rolled up in one you know it's kind of looks like that anyway sorry didn't mean to I regressed I apologize so uh, let's see so Mountain View is a, a small subdivision much like Leilani Estates in the Puna district of the far eastern corner of the Big Island. Its elevation is much higher than that of Leilani. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm down from the volcano, but not down as low as they are. There's a Highway 11 that runs uh, uh, north-south. I'm on the western side, and the rift zone is on, just parallels the Highway 11 north-south, all right? And the rift zone is kind of where the land is splitting, and then if you, uh, if you, uh, tee off of that uh, rift zone down the hill even further that's where Leilani Estates is and that's where they're getting the lava tubes and and as you know lava lava flows downhill even though it's a the lava is called Pohoaho it's a thicker thick based lava with air in it and so it's aerated and, and it moves like molasses as you've seen but nothing can stop it it stops when it stops you know and, and, and then when it finally does stop it dries it cools it hardens and then voila you've got land and that's kind of how the island regenerates itself so it's a natural process but you know when you live in its path you know you got to really be mindful and you got to respect the fact you're living on a live volcano it's 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 uh it's kind of spooky but you know it, it's it's uh the people there are very spiritual and, and they do respect it believe me you know so they do so um let's see where i leave off at here okay so so Leilani states, so there's no immediate danger except for the sulfur dioxide, uh, which is usually present uh, the nearer you get to the volcano or when there's a seismic activity. And again, I mentioned earlier, there's actually two rift zones. There's more than that, but the two in, in, in question are the, the two rift zones that are, and they're connected. One's called the East Rift Zone and the other one's called the Southwest Rift Zone. And uh, so again, I said, it, I said before, it almost parallels Highway 11, uh, running north and south, uh, and on the east side of 11 all you know and that's what separates you know the main the main section of the big island from that corner that little piece there where Kilo, uh, where um, 
Lilania states is. And so, uh, let's see. Okay, so, and then Highway 11, when it circles the island, but it changes names to different highway names as you as you start to go around the island. So I just want to throw that in there. So the last two eruptions of, of Kilauea was uh, 1790 and 1924. In 1924, the explosion was so deadly that it too launched car-sized boulders for miles and even lowered the summit area down by several hundred feet. Um, so on my last day there, um, well, it wasn't my last day there. I rented a car for the whole week, but the last day I was there, <coughs> excuse me, I took my uh, my rental car. It was convertible, and, um, and I... Uh, drove around the whole perimeter of the island. Uh, I started at Hilo Airport, which is in the, uh, the northeastern uh, portion of the big island, and I drove uh, on the north northern highway that went around uh, all the way to the Kona coast. Then I drove southeast uh, all the way down to that part, that corner of the island, which is still Kona, but it rounds the corner on the southern tip of the western edge, and then I drove east uh, back around the southern tip, where the uh, where the uh, first Hawaiians first came to the island uh, in canoes, and then from there, uh, let's see, uh, come around. so coming from the uh, southeastern corner of the Big Island, uh, I am now traveling northbound and up the hill on the back slope of Kilauea, then back to uh, Hilo, back on Highway 11. It was very late in the day and getting dark, and all the tourists were all gone by this time. They have tour buses that go up to the uh, volcano park, you know, and throughout the day, and they check out the, you know, you, they unboard the bus, and they go check out. They get you as close as they can, but you're still about well over a thousand yards away from the, the big crater there up at Kilauea. They have this big uh, wooden fence thing you can't get past, and there's a, the U.S. Geological Survey. They, they have... They camp out there 24/7. They have a big building there, and they talk about the, you know, they talk about the, all the volcanic activity in the island and all this stuff. So, you know, they allow, only allow you so far. You can see the crater, and you can see even the lava on, on when when the lava has risen, and you can even see, uh, you know, smoke coming out. And there are even uh, steam vents, right, almost where you're where you're standing that come up, but they're they're you know marked off. You can't go there, but you can see the steam coming out from the ground. So. So, you know, you're, it's a very humbling experience when you're standing there and you're, you're face to face. You feel like, uh, what was that movie? Joe, uh, facing, facing off with the uh, volcano, Joe and the volcano or whatever that is. But anyway, I kind of drifted away. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. Um, but it's just a humbling experience when you're actually there in person and you're standing so close to such a powerful, uh, volcano as Kilauea is. It's very humbling and you just realize your place in this world you're like eh, way down here and you got this big massive volcano and you're standing there and smoke's coming out of the cinder cone and you're going oh crap you know that any moment now that this if it decides to act up well you know you're you know not gonna have a good rest of your day <laughs> mm. so like i mentioned it was getting dark the tourists were all gone for the day i was there by myself i mean by myself it was getting dark. It's scary when you're there by yourself and there's nobody there and you're that close to that such a big volcano and you can see the the glow from the lava from the inside of it. Um, in my honest opinion, Highway 11 curves you a bit too close to the crater because as you're going up the hill, east being to my, well, to my right, that way, whatever, and um, it curves you kind of cl pretty close to the crater and you're driving kind of right by it and then it curves you back and, and then... Uh, up the hill and then back down toward uh, north and then back down to Hilo. Um, it's a scary thing. So, as I mentioned, as, as darkness fell, it was eerie driving that close to the to the cinder cone, and being the only the only one in the area. You know, it, it was it gave you a weird you know a weird uh, weird feeling. The lava illuminated uh, as the evening sky from uh, as the evening sky from the. Uh, deep pit below. Kilauea has its own weather patterns too, as lightning was cracking nearby and rain fell all around you. So of course I put my top back on. I had a convertible. 
The hairs on the back of my neck stood straight up as I drove right past Kilauea for the last time on that trip. You're living on an active volcano, so you would expect seismic activity, volcanic and atmospherical activity on the island from time to time. So it's really to the people that live there and their long-termers, long-termers that have been there quite a while, they're used to this. I mean, you know, it's, it's inconvenience, and um, but it's it's no surprise. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to say. So, um, mahalo.